Good morning. It's Monday, April 6, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, And Justice for All, and our scripture is Isaiah chapter 42. Look at my servant whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one who pleases me. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who have been wronged. He will not falter or lose heart until justice prevails throughout the earth. Even distant lands beyond the sea will wait for his instruction. God, the Lord, created the heavens and stretched them out. He created the earth and everything in it. He gives breath to everyone, life to everyone who walks the earth. And it is he who says, I, the Lord, have called you to demonstrate my righteousness. I will take you by the hand and guard you, and I will give you to my people Israel as a symbol of my covenant with them, and you will be a light to guide the nations. You will open the eyes of the blind. You will free the captives from prison, releasing those who sit in dark dungeons. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to anyone else, nor share my praise with carved idols. Everything I prophesied has come true, and now I will prophesy again. I will tell you the future before it happens. If you consider carefully this passage, you'll see everything for which the human spirit longs. Chief among those longings is justice for all. Novels, movies, news reports, freedom marches, wars, civil strife, and even the backyard fight between preschool boys all center around justice. The story or cause may be about the violence done by some to others, but the backstory is our longing to have things set right. And that never happens in isolation. Christ followers of every generation since the first century have had a deep sense of this need for church, the koinonia fellowship of caring. Tied to this is Christ's call to go everywhere in his name, doing the same as he did, driving out the demonic influences that are a violence to holiness, feeding the hungry, visiting the lonely and poor, freeing the slaves. Without this sense of mission, there can be no holiness. Founder of Methodism, John Wesley, spoke eloquently to the fallacy of solitary religion, the singular hermit-like brand of Christianity desiring salvation and justice received, but isolated, unwilling to give oneself to Christ's body. He said it this way, Solitary religion is not to be found there. Holy solitaries is a phrase no more consistent with the gospel than holy adulterers. The gospel of Christ knows no religion but social, no holiness but social holiness. We are currently bound in isolation due to the coronavirus. On this fifth week of not meeting together in our church buildings, I am decidedly experiencing withdrawal. It's not withdrawal from sermons and readings and hymns and the demand of completing all the liturgy and the bulletin within the hour time frame. Rather, it's the people. It's the fleshly embodiment of the Spirit's presence where I am more than Russell could possibly be. This forced abandonment is a scarcity of communing with, to, and from Christ's body. It's an absence of the joy of the common desire of our mission to bring Christ's kingdom of justice for all to all. When I was a little boy refusing to eat my broccoli, my mom would say, there are children starving in Africa who would love to have what's on your plate. As an immature child, I wanted to hand the plate to mom and say, mail it to him. But I was never quite that brave or foolish. Having gotten a lot older and a little wiser, I now have trouble finishing my plate without thinking of those bellies that are rumbling with emptiness. For you today, perhaps isolation caused by a modern-day plague is just what the doctor ordered for people so we can appreciate the joy of following Jesus together. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.